You know how in some videos we can see a fast transition between different shots. Typically in the real world this is achieved in post-production. However, in 3D the time-consuming process of rendering frames can be a costly venture. Imagine having to render an additional 10 or even 20 hours for something that will be condensed to just a fraction of a second. The good news is that in 3ds Max we can achieve this effect directly without rendering an excessive amount of frames that won't be used later on. Let's see how to do that. For this tutorial I will use a simple scene set with Corona Render. To start animating the camera I will hide most of the objects. This will help me concentrate mainly on the camera movement. Additionally, if the viewport becomes too heavy, it may affect our ability to preview the camera movements effectively. Next, let's examine the timeline, which defaults is 100 frames. Animation is typically measured in frames per second, such as 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. For this tutorial, I will use 30 frames per second, aiming for a 5 second camera movement, totaling in 150 frames. To adjust the timeline, click on the time configuration button. Notice that setting the length to stop on the frame 150 results in a total frame count of 151, considering the zeroed frame. To have exactly 150 frames, I will set the length to end at the frame 149, taking the zeroed frame as the first one. Click OK to apply. Now we have two cameras. One will ascend vertically away from the house, revealing the surrounding forest, and the other one will approach the house along a curved path I created. Pay attention that I am not using a target for the camera to avoid dealing with the target's behavior. I will begin by animating that camera, but first it's a good idea to rename it. Then open the motion panel where you will find tools to adjust the object's motion. Click on Assign Controllers, an option enabling the assignment of various animation controllers to individual objects, in our case the camera. Since we want the camera to follow the path, select Position. Open the Assigned Position controller and choose Path Constraint. This allows us to specify a path for the camera to follow. In the Path parameters, add the created curve. Ok, the camera is now moving along that line. However, if I select the camera viewport and click the play button, we will notice that the speed is constant. This is where the interesting part of this tutorial starts. Right click while the camera is selected and open the curve editor. The curve editor is a helpful tool that allows precise control over keyframe interpolation and speed adjustments. What we will change here is the consistent speed, so we are going to manipulate some curves. First, I want to preview both keyframes, the beginning and the end key. To fit them on the window, just click on these guys here. Now we can see the first and the second key representing the start and the end points of the camera movement. The line between them is straight, indicating consistent speed. Note that if I select the auto tangents option on a key, nothing is happening. To make the key points busier curves, which is what I want, Go back to the controllers list. Under position, select percentage, linear fault. Now, add a controller, bezier fault. Ok, now the line is not straight. If I select the start point and click on auto tangents, I can manipulate the curve. The vertical values represent the percentage of the distance and the horizontal values represent the frames, 150 in our case. If I create a simple curve, the camera will cover most of the distance quickly and ease its speeds towards the end. It may seem overwhelming at first, but it's not a rocket science. After watching the video, you can play with the curves until you get used to them. In our case, I want to start with a slow movement and then, at some point, increase the speed drastically. For this, we need a reversed curve, essentially two lines with a curve between them, one for the slow movement and one for the fast. Usually achieving exactly what I want requires a few adjustments. Ok, this is what I was looking for. Slow movement at the beginning and fast movement at the end. The rapid movement will serve as a transition to the next camera. The second camera will quickly fly away from the house to reveal the entire environment 
a common effect in real estate videos. I will animate it by clicking on the Auto key option or simply pressing N. Move the slider to the end point, which will be the end point of the camera animation, very high in our case. Move the camera to the end point. Additionally, I want the camera to rotate while flying away, so I will add a rotation as well. Disable the Auto key option and preview the animation. Given that this camera comes after the first one, it should start moving fast. I will follow a similar process as with the previous camera by opening the curve editor. Now you will notice more transformations on the left. Unlike the previous camera, which had just one parameter for position, percentage, here we have curve for movement on X, Y and Z. This is because the camera is not just moving on a path. Since our camera is moving vertically with no change on X and Y, we will see a curve only in the Z position. Apply auto tangents and adjust the curve to start fast and slow down at the end. Play around with the curve shapes until you achieve the desired effect. This may take a few tries. Ok, it looks good, but the rotation of the camera is executing at a consistent speed. To fix that, I will select the rotation which is also on the Z axis and make the same adjustments. Now it's time to render both cameras. I will unhide all the geometries and render each camera separately. In some cases it's a good idea to save them as a different files, but for this simple animation I will keep them together. Another aspect to consider is the motion blur of the camera, a visual effect that occurs when fast moving objects appear blurred in images or video frames due to the relative motion between the camera and the objects. This will be particularly useful for that camera because the combination of rotation and motion blur will create something like a vortex effect. However, keep in mind that this effect requires a significant amount of computing power from the render engines such as V-Ray or Corona and most modern render engines. Now open the render settings, choose the active time segment, specify a location on your hard drive to save the frames and set a limit for each frame the noise level in my case. This step is crucial as we will be rendering a lot of frames and each should stop at some specific point, such as the noise level in my case. Additionally, add a denoiser and switch the UHD mode from still to animation. Now click render. After rendering both cameras, I will need to stitch all the frames together. For this, I will use Chaos Player. Simply drag a frame from the first camera and a frame from the second one. Now, since the second is above the first, we need to increase the time frame specified on the right, in our case to 299. Again, the zeroth frame is considered as first. Move one of the sequences to the right and drag the white cursor to the end. Now I can preview the entire animation. To save it as an mp4 file, I will go to File, Export Layer Sequence and choose a location. Click OK. Ok guys, that was all for that video. Remember, curves are something essential when it comes to animations. If you want to see more animations or RVs content, check out my other videos and stay tuned for the next one.